and sessions of your material science and metallurgy. This is myself Vivek Pari, your trader for your thing that is known as your heat treatment of the steels. We are going or we have seen in our very first lecture that was about the objectives of the heat treatment. Why we are going for the heat treatment? What is the need for the heat treatment? Why we are only going majorly for the steels? And then after that objectives and all, the standard view of your heat treatment steps we have seen. And at last, before ending our lecture, we have seen that is our TTT diagram, time temperature transformation diagram. So now in this lecture, let us proceed further for our next thing that is how we will generate this TTT diagram or how this diagram has been generated. So now let us come or let us focus on this thing that what is this TTT diagram. So let us recall it back that this diagram is known as a TTT diagram that is known as a time temperature transformation diagram. I give you certain informations like we are having the three ranges that is perlitic, magnetic and martensitic range or you can say microstructures they are obtained with the help of this thing. So why this thing? As I told you iron carbon diagram was unable to show the martensitic and the magnetic region. But this thing it will be showing you the both the regions as well as your politic region. Why we are going for this thing? Because it will show you that how the transformation is occurring at the temperature. Because when there is a change in the temperature, there will be the change in the transformation. So that relation is shown by this TTT diagram. So now let us begin with the thing that is how we are going or how this TTT diagram has been constructed. Clear? So for that thing, let us start the construction. What we have to do? Obtain the very large number of the relatively small specimen we have to take. Of whose? Of the steel composition whose we want to find it out the particular change, transformation. Clear? So first, take many different types of the specimen, different types of the specimen of the same steel composition. Okay. After that what we have to do? Now place the specimen. Where we have to place? We have to place it in a molten bath in which the bath has been maintained at an austenizing temperature. Means the temperature at which your steel will transform into austenite. That temperature is known as an austenizing temperature. But bath means a certain type of the liquid which we are taking and which we are keeping it at the austenitic rate. That is probably above 723 degrees Celsius. It is always above 723. So we are keeping a bath whose temperature is more than 723 degrees Celsius or you can say above recrystallization temperature. Okay. So what we have to do? We have to take the sample, whatever the sample which we have taken, take that sample and place it inside the bath which is kept at that particular austenizing temperature. Now what we will be doing, soak the specimen, soak means dip that specimen inside the bath sufficiently for that long time to ensure, why? To ensure that the whole thing has converted into austenite. That means our second step, recall it, heating, holding, cooling. When you are placing your sample into that bath, what will happen? Automatically heating occurs because that bath is kept at a above 723 degrees Celsius. So material is at our room temperature. So what will happen? By placing that material inside the bath, heating takes place. Place that material for some time. So what will happen? The whole specimen will be at your predetermined temperature. Clear? And after that what we have to do? We have to take it out. So what we are doing here? We are going for the soaking. Long time soaking. So the time of soaking should also kept constant throughout the experiment. Take the sample, that same sample we are using but you have to soak that sample for the same time. Suppose if you are soaking a specimen for 30 minutes then for the whole experiment soak each and every specimen for 30 minutes only. Clear? Don't variate your time. After that what will happen? Transfer the specimen to another salt bath. From that salt bath, transfer that to the another bath which is kept at some constant temperatures, which is kept at some constant temperature between the range of the temperature which will be given. That is AC1 to MS. Okay. So now transfer the specimen to the different bath. So what will happen? 
transformation will start occurring. What is the new bath temperature range? That is AC1 and MS. Between AC1 and MS, you will be keeping it. Okay? And then what we will be we doing? Allow it for the transformation. What you will do? After converting or after taking it to the another bath, allow that specimen to get converted into whatever the temperature you want and after that remove that sample and then cool it with the help of the water or the brine or if the atmosphere. Clear? So these were the steps, basic steps. What we did, the experiment goes like this. Take the many samples of the steel sample dip inside the bath which is kept at an austenizing temperature for some sufficient time. So the whole material will convert into austenite phase. After that, take that specimen from that bath and place it in your another bath which is kept at AC1 to MS line. After keeping it in this point, allow it the material for the transformation and after the whole material transform into that region, take out and cool it with a water or a brine or the atmosphere. So this was your experimental setup. But what will happen? What will happen in that thing? Now, the first specimen may be allowed to react for 2 seconds. Next specimen, let us take it for second, 4 seconds, 8 seconds, up to 15 hours. So what we are doing? We are keeping our specimens. We are allowing it for the isothermal thing in the second bath. We are keeping the material in our second bath at the variable time. First sample 2 seconds, 4 seconds, 8 seconds, depending upon that thing you can go further 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, increase your time of the reaction. And as a result you will get the transformations in the material. Now depending upon the time which we are giving to react isothermally, austenite will be changing from perlite and martensite. So as I told you, when you are keeping it in the bath and how much time you are allowing it for the cooling, that will decide the final microstructure of the material. Whether it will be a perlite, whether it can be a bainite or whether it can be a martensite. Clear? So this is how we will construct the diagram. And all these points, what we will be doing? Whenever the transformation starts, that point and whenever the transformation get finished, that point. All the points, they are plotted on the TTT curve and we will get on the graph that the whole diagram will get. Since this is the thing, this will, this will help you out in the way that how it is done. So, these are the diagram. This is the transformation start region. This is the transformation end region. So this is the first sample which we are taking and the time we are plotting it. So you can see over here, transformation start, we are plotting it at the bottom. Transformation finish, we are plotting it at the bottom. So different samples, we are plotting this diagram in this way. Transformation start and transformation finish, we will be plotting. So now let us see in the figure set that this is the diagram. You can see over here, this point is plotted over here, the end point we will be going over here. So according to that, if you plot all the points of all the samples, you will always get this C type of the diagram which you will get. This is the TTT diagram which we have studied in our previous lecture. You can see over here, this is the austenitic range up to which we are getting. And if you go for the cooling rapidly, you can say here there is a time lock scale. So if the less time is taken, you can say you will get the martensitic region. As the time goes on increasing, you can see the graph will go from here to here. So if the time, more time is taken, perlitic region is there, benetic region, according to the transformation, we will get this diagram. This is known as the nose of the diagram. This is known as the nose of the diagram. Above which you will get the perlet, below which you will get the bainite. In this between region you will get all the three things. Perlite plus bainite plus martensite plus ferrite, austenite. All the microstructures are there in this center region. Clear? So this is the TTT diagram how we are going to construct it. This is how the time temperature transformation diagram is getting constructed. Okay? And this is where which we will be seeing over here. So this is your starting transformation over here. 
this is the ending transformation over here and we will be plotting different transformation point we will be getting it over here clear so this was about your time temperature transformation diagram so let us proceed further with our next diagram that is known as a CCT diagram that is critical cooling transformation diagram now let us see what is this CCT but before moving you must be knowing TTT diagram then and then we can plot CCT diagram so this is the diagram what we have did let us see over the diagram that is the thing that already we have seen this is our TTT diagram TTT diagram is shown over here after that what we will be doing we will be going for the cooling at the different rate as I told you on the cooling the different phases are dependent so from that thing what is the transformation and what is the final product which we are getting we will be finding out let us say if you are going for the cooling in the furnace cooling if you go for the furnace cooling that means the slower cooling what will happen your material will be transformed into coarser perlite perlite but coarser very large types of the grains are there so if you go for the very slow cooling in the furnace so what will happen your coarser perlite you will get if you go from over here for some of the faster way that is in the atmosphere you will get the air cooling you will get the fine perlitic region finer perlite you will be getting what you get you will get the finer perlitic region okay so this is how you will get the perlite either you go for the furnace cooling or you go for the air pool, you will get the perlite. Now, what is the martensite? side? Martin side, you are always obtaining by the water quenching, oil quenching, by whatever the quenching means. Rapid cooling, if you go, these two orange color and red color lines indicates you that it will directly come into your martensitic region. So, what you get? you get the martensitic structure over here by the rapid cooling with how oil and water one region which is left that is known as a penitic that is the controlled cooling if you go suppose i told you that this is the nose over here if you have to go for the nose above nose if you go what will happen you will get the perlitic region so cool the material rapidly below the nose Place the material in the bath for a very long time. So what will happen? You can see this will come in this way and it will enter your bainite region. You can see the bainite region will be there. The method which is used that is known as an os tempering method. We will discuss in our upcoming lectures about this os tempering. But this is how in a step cooling you will get the transformation that is the bainitic transformation we will be getting. This is how that is our critical cooling transformation diagram is there. Clear? So this was about your critical cooling transformation. So up to now we have seen the two major diagrams that is time temperature transformation and we have related time temperature transformation diagram with our critical cooling transformation that how by cooling in which way we will get which type of the microstructure that we have saw in this lecture. Clear? So this was your CCT diagram. Now remember one thing that before going let us see this thing. Here you can see over here there is a log time given. Time in the TTT diagram is always given as the form of the time log scale. Why time log scale? Let us say that your first sample is taken for 10 seconds, second sample that is for 100, third one that is 1000 seconds. And if you want to plot this diagram, fifth one that is about something like 1 lakh second. And if you want to plot this thing on the diagram, it will be very difficult. And the points will be very much closer to each other. To represent these different points on the graph, let us take the log scale log 10 will be equal to 1, log 100 will be equal to 2, log 1000 equal to 3, log 10,000 equal to 4, log lap will equal to 5. And so which points you get? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when you plot this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the diagram, it will be on the equal position. So for plotting this diagram perfectly, we always go for the time log scale in your TTT diagram as 
well as in your CCT diagram. So remember this thing, don't make mistake while writing the actions that is the time log scale. Clear? Why log we are using? We are using the log because we want to correlate many vast variety of range of the time. So for correlating the vast range of the time, we are always going for the time log scale in your TTT as well as CCT diagram. Clear? So this was about your these two diagrams and in the next lectures we will be proceeding further with our heat treatment. Which are the treatments? What are the effects? All that type of the things we will be covering in our upcoming lectures. That is the different types of the heat treatment. Clear? Till then, thank you.